Okay, let's continue talking about websites and kind of analyzing websites. Um, again, probably uh, the most important part of uh, of looking at websites would be to figure out how the uh, the design is and how the code is, and maybe using um, some of the technology that other people are using in their website in your website. And so, um, you know, if if we go again, if I'm currently look, using the Firefox browser here. So if I go underneath the tools, under Web Developer, there's one called the Page Source. Okay, Page Source. If we go and look at that again, you can see all the code that the people used. Um, some of the things that we're going to have to learn about is 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 again some of the the the, the doc type, um, uh, the head head. Um, we're going to learn a lot about the CSS, uh, a lot about. Um, uh, JavaScript. You'll notice there's a lot of JavaScript that is written in this page right here. And then um, there's some links to external JavaScript here and we'll learn all about those different things. So one of the things that you could do as you are looking and using the page source here, just analyze what other people have done and see um, the different code that they use. And eventually we'll learn about all the different tags. These are called tags. All the different tags that um, were being used and, and, and how we could um, kind of mimic what other people are doing and then you say well isn't that kind of stealing well if you think about it the HTML that you're looking at and the JavaScript and things like that is, is open source and so you pretty much can can use what other people have done it's it's just programming that um, uh, anybody could use and so again this is more of an open source um, technology and it's not like you're stealing what, what you you know you can't really steal their design and you know I can't really take like this logo and then put it on my website and call it mine um, you know there's copyright but as far as the code is concerned if we're looking at the code that is is, is open source so as we look through the different web pages that we have uh, on this website this is an, an, an agency and they build websites and do different things um, again it doesn't quite fit on my screen and so I have to actually scroll and so the term that we use to go up and down in a website or even horizontal is scrolling the scroll back and forth uh, you can see there's some typography in there you'll see a link to a video most likely that link is is to a video on YouTube um, mostly what we'll do is we'll is, 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 is yeah, so um, no, this, I don't know if this is on YouTube. It doesn't look like it, but we'll we'll be doing most of our video links on on YouTube. So there's video links, um, there's typography, there's graphics. Um, these are graphics, and 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 so this is a quite a agency. It's a little sophisticated site. It's quite nice. The, the colors are quite nice, and the the wood kind of texture and the video in the background is is a good idea. I like kind of this video in the background, and we can learn how to do things like that in this class. Um, let's look at a couple other websites. We're going to look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, and what I mean by that is there's a there's a variety of different um, websites out there, and there's billions of them. And as you just look at them, you'll see you know where the problems are and and things like that. Like this website right now is for I believe um, I don't know a resort or maybe just furniture. I'm not really sure what this website is for. But um, one of the biggest problems they have, of course, is all they have is a photo right here, and then there's some kind of logo down here. Um, but then I get down here and the, the typography is very hard to see. Um, this, this yellow that is, or orange, that is over top of white is, is quite difficult to see. Then of course they have links to different information and as soon as I click a link it just goes back to the top part. And then it goes back to the, if I click on products, um, it, it it just goes to a page like this. Yeah, I guess they're a furniture company. Now that I see it now, and so uh, w what is the problem with this website? Well, one of the problems is, of course, I, I I can't see everything. Whenever you click on something, it just goes back to this giant picture of this. Uh, the colors are very difficult to see on the screen. It doesn't quite fit on my um my screen, and um. You know, a lot of people build websites like that. I think, you know, since it's a furniture company, they want people to look at their furniture. So I guess that's sort of the purpose of this website. Um, if I look at the code, again, one of the things I want you to do is look at the code. 
you can get it again under tools web developer page source and you'll see they have wow there's a lot of a lot of a lot of stuff in here wow okay if we look at the first thing is they're using the older doc type this is not HTML5 this is the X uh, the XHTML and we'll learn about all the different formats but wow uh, they have a lot of different technologies that they're using in this site um, kind of makes it load very slow my since it, since I, I went to this website already it kind of loaded kind of quickly on my screen while I'm making this video here was because I've already went to the website and then it saved it but the first time I went to this website boy it took a long time to load because it has all this extra code so one of the things we need to learn about as we're building websites is how to make them so that they load fast and of course one way is to not put as much junky code that you see like this one has in there I mean I could have anybody could have made the same website without all that extra code again if you wanted to save a picture of this website again um, if you've downloaded the um, the screen grab from the um, Mozilla add-on website if you right click and say screen grab you can save a complete frame and image and then of course the other way to save would be under the file save page as and it'll save an archive even with all the pictures and everything um, I'm not gonna save this one it's a pretty crappy site so um let's go to the uh, let's see a couple more uh, of course um, one of my favorite websites is the uh, Yahoo website. Uh, Yahoo uses a variety of new technologies um, that are built in uh, to the internet today. A lot of the standard technologies, mostly in the JavaScript world, and and we're going to learn a lot about what's called AJAX and JavaScript. And um, the advantage of that is is pushing data. Okay, so we're going to learn a lot about what's called the difference between dynamic websites and static websites. A static website is somebody who builds a website that is just plain HTML and it has pictures and it doesn't dynamically change every day or, you know, it's pretty much the same every time somebody goes there. Or most websites today are done more what we call a dynamic website, one that has data that is pushed out um, constantly to the page to keep it fresh and up to date like all, all the all the things that you see on the the um on the Yahoo website is updated um you know almost every seconds and and so um a lot of the things that we see on the um on the site you know we'll learn how to make um more slideshow kind of things like this using jQuery and JavaScript and so you you have this little slideshow kind of thing there um, there's some nice links to pages, um, nice rollover links that tell you where there is. We'll learn how to do all that, that the rollover is when you're. Um, learn how to um, make tabs. Um, so a lot of the stuff you see here is, is and Yahoo is, 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 is probably a very good website. And uh, of course they got ads on there. So, you know, the Yahoo is a great way of, of looking at things. Um, if you find something that you like and you want to keep it, uh, if it's a picture like this one right here, the deadly explosion and some Venezuela blast, I don't know, I just saw this right here. If you wanted to um, save this picture and uh, uh, for later reference or anything, you can always right click on it. And uh, if you're using, again, the Firefox browser, um, you can right click on something and you can go to where it says save image as right there. And that'll save that JPEG mostly. Most of the images you find, at least on a web page, will be a JPEG and stuff. So um, in this case, uh, Yahoo is a great example. And I have some good, 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 um, good technologies in their website. Uh, let's look at a couple more. Um, uh, one of the things I kind of look at is, 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 um, um, uh, again, you see pictures that are kind of fading and a lot of these web pages kind of towards the top or somewhere on the page. Uh, whenever you see that, it's either made with, uh, um, Flash or what we call jQuery. Why, why would you use one over the other? Well, of course, the downfall of Flash is that it's not really going to work on the Apple products. Most of the Apple um, technology, like iPhones and iPads and things, really don't take advantage of the Flash technology. 
And uh, um, how do you know the difference? Well, if I see something changing like this, this is a nice code of fading a picture. It's going to be jQuery or, or JavaScript. If I right click again, it doesn't say flashed on here. And we haven't really been to a page that has flash on it yet. But if you see something that's fading or changing and it looks like it's an animation or something, it might be flash. You can tell by right clicking and saving image as. Um, that was a nice, this is a nice page, um, simple, and it fits on my screen quite nicely. Okay, it's a nice small screen. I think they make it because, of course, this is a, a, an AIDS or Christian uh, relief, um, and and a lot of the, you know, the, the the reason why I think they have this screen so small is because think about it. They want people from around the world to be able to to look at this web page, and uh, a lot of people might have small screens still. You know, some people um, don't have those giant computer screens, and I don't have a giant computer screen that I'm working on right now. And this fits nicely, unlike some of the other ones we've looked at already. So they were really thinking of their audience. Uh, which one was this one? Oh, here's one way that um, a, a web page might um, give you dynamic content. Again, this would be something that was done in Flash. Uh, compared to somebody who might not have flashes, they give the user a choice. Do you want to see the the flash version, or do you want to see the HTML version? So they they'll actually give you a choice. And of course, if you click on the flash version, one of the downfalls, at least of this one, is it jumps to full screen, which doesn't fit on my screen here. And I can't really shrink the browser down. Oh, there we go. I can shrink it down to fit on the page. And if I go and I I see it, I can see the um the links you can see the flash version has the animation and stuff if I right click on it you'll see it says flash right there so I know it's done in flash and of course you can then go if you really wanted to the basic HTML version and you can see that and you know it's just basically more of a um, and and I'm not a big fan of flash and I, I tend not to like flash I don't really use flash anymore um, you can do a lot of the same things that Flash does with videos or with um, plain JavaScript now. And so those things are more open source and, and will kind of render in any browser. Uh, let's quickly go through a lot of the, uh, I was looking at a lot of church sites. Um, the reason why is is this is a really good one. You'll see something called RSS feeds on this one. Of course, we've got our links to Facebook and Twitter. This is a, quite a nice site. And the reason why I kind of look at the church sites is a lot of times they're done with volunteers and they're not really the best. And it's good to look at what you know what a simple, more simple HTML page is like. And you know, because we're going to build mostly simple pages, but this one was a, quite a nice site. Um, so that was a, a, a quite a nice site. Uh, let's see. Um, of course, the cathedral downtown. Um, they use a lot of different technologies in this website. Um, there's a lot of um, the one thing I I didn't like about this site is the rollover effect. And so while while I'm analyzing websites, I look at you know the functionality as well as the layout. Okay, the layout will be how the 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 content is organized on the page. Again, I look at the code by going under the tools. Um, you know, page source um, and seeing how the, the code is. Uh, one of the ones I don't like about this website is the rollover effect on the link. So, you know, if you want to get married at the site, you can go, oh, weddings. When I roll over, it goes from this kind of reddish black to a white, and you can't even really see it. Usually, I, I kind of do the opposite. I'll have a lighter one that goes to maybe darker or something like that. So, that's, that's one of the ones, parts I didn't like about this website. Um, let's see a couple more real quick here. Um, is this this one? Okay, yeah, this is a very um, simple website. Um, pretty much plain HTML. Um, you'll see there's there's different columns of information. They have one, two, three, four columns of information. These are called columns, and that's where the content is organized up and down. And we'll learn about how to make four or three or two column websites. Um, one of the things about this code is it's 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 very sloppy, and the reason why it's sloppy is because it probably wasn't made by a professional web designer. It was just made by somebody who was learning the code. As I go through and I look at the code, you'll see that they they have a lot of um, what we call um, code written right in there. That that this is a a CSS file that that is written right in the head section. Um, they have some JavaScript that's written right into the page. Usually, I would do it as a 
an external file and we'll learn about what that means and then you'll notice they did this with Dreamweaver and, and I can tell they did it with Dreamweaver because the old version of Dreamweaver would write um, this kind of CSS like this where it just start writing style 1, style 6, style 3 right inside so this is a very simple website that um, uses a lot of old CSS, a lot of this old background color you're not supposed to use anymore, this BG color. So um, as we go through and learn about that, you can see how you know transition from new websites to old websites, which kind of brings me to uh, one of my favorite websites. Oh, one more before uh, church website before we go is this, of course the the parish one here. One of the things that we're going to learn a lot about in the next couple of weeks will be, of course, the technology. One of them will be bringing maps in, like this is a map here uh, that's for the Diocese of San Jose. And they have a nice map here to all the different churches within the area. And uh, you can click on it and go to that section. So we'll learn a lot about bringing Google Maps and things like that in. Uh, the one I, the next one that I really want you to start looking at will be the the archive.org. I know if you've been in some of my other classes, we look at this website a lot. One of the nice things about the archive.org is it allows you to to analyze what websites used to look like in previous. So if I wanted to see what the the West Valley website looked like previously, I can go to westvalley.edu and it take take me back. Woo! what it does is it takes you back to it archives what websites used to look like years ago and so let's say when oh let's see back in 1997 oh, I don't think they have one for 1997 I shouldn't have clicked on that um, let's go back oh here 1998 is the first one they, they actually have here and so it'll take you back to what it looked like in 1998 why is it not giving me that Let's see here. Where is? Oh, here we go. You have to click on the date of 1998. No, that one has an error. Let's see. Oh, there we go. And oh, it has a link to. No, this is not going to work. I should have chose a better website. Uh, how about we go to Yahoo? So if you go to Yahoo, if you go to the Wayback Machine here and go to Yahoo.com. It'll show you what it looked like woo, years ago. About uh, let's see what 1997 looked like um, on uh, on March. Oh no, it still didn't go to 1997 yet. Uh, no, it's still giving me the 2011. How about 2007? Yeah, I just think it's slow. That's all. All right, here we go. It went to something. Oh, 2007. So we can go back to see what it looked like in 2007. So um, that's kind of a good tool. Um, it's called the Wayback Machine. Um, just go and try it. It's on the archive.org website. Um, there's a variety of different ones. Again, for tools, um, we haven't really talked about the um, tools yet for uh, building web pages and things like that. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll make some videos about which tools to use. Uh, I'll, I'll, a lot of tools I use, of, of course, would be the Dreamweaver from Adobe, um, some HTML editors, and things like that. But for right now, for this first kind of week and things like that, I just want you to learn about what browsers do. Take some samples. Look at what you like on websites. Look at some of the HTML codes. Look at some of the vocabulary words. Try and figure out what the technology is that these browsers are using to render or display websites. And um, um, that's how you get started.